With this, I'd like to wrap up the course Angular Basics with a very clear disclaimer that this is just the basics. We have just scratched the surface of Angular. There is a lot to cover. And I don't want this course to be one of those 20 hour video courses because there's so much to do. And what I wanted to do, the goal of this course from the very beginning was to provide you with the basic information to help you build a simple Angular application and also some awareness of all the different concepts so that when you actually uh, look up a search engine for a problem that you have or you read the Angular documentation, you kind of have an idea about what's going on and it, the documentation makes sense when you tackle some of the advanced topics. So with that in mind, in this video, what I wanna do is, as a wrap up, not look back, but look ahead. If you've followed along this course, you should already know what we've covered. So I don't wanna repeat that. What I wanna do instead is cover some of the things that you need to investigate and deep dive into more uh, once you are kind of comfortable with the material that's covered in this course, right? What are the next things you're gonna have to learn? Uh, I would start with doing a deep dive into components. Components are like the heart of an Angular application and we've learned how to build a component, we've learned how to uh, bind data between the markup and the component class itself. Uh, but there are a lot more to components. There is the life cycle of components. There are ways in which you can configure how the data binding happens and uh, how you can specify different configuration for the component so that it, it affects the way the component works, right? There is a lot you can do. Even the metadata for the component, right? The component decorator contains a lot more properties to that object and we've just looked at a handful. Uh, I would definitely recommend looking into some of the other properties and things you can do to kind of tweak the component and the way it works. The next important thing that I want you to look at and learn about is testing in Angular. We haven't covered testing at all in this course. Uh, testing involves learning a whole bunch of other things that you need. Uh, you need to learn about Jasmine yeah, for unit testing. You need to learn how tests run. Uh, with Angular CLI, it's not that complicated. You use the command ng test in order to run the test. But if you were to run the test in our projects, they're all gonna fail because the test case, the single test case that Angular CLI creates is for that simple bare bones project that Angular CLI created. The minute we change the project, you know, which we have done in this course by just removing the, the starting markup that the CLI generates, the tests are gonna fail because that's what the test is validating. So I definitely recommend checking out Jasmine and the Angular testing framework in order to understand how to write tests for your Angular applications. There's also end-to-end -end testing that you can do with Angular uh, that's using Protractor. That is, starts up a simple browser and renders the page and lets you interact with the DOM in order to test what gets rendered and validate that everything is rendered properly, right? That's a slightly different approach to testing. And both of them are very widely used uh, in Angular, in the Angular community. So I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, the next topic that you should look at is doing a deep dive into routing. Uh, again, I've just scratched the surface in this unit. There is a lot more you can do. Uh, so I definitely recommend looking at the Angular documentation for routing. If you need a deep dive into routing, please shout out in the comments and I might create a mini course for routing itself. But that's definitely something you'd need when you build an Angular app with a decent level of complexity. The next thing you should look at is RxJS. We looked at observables, uh, but there's a lot more to observables. There's a lot you can do with the reactive model of programming. Uh, there are operators that you can apply and simplify the way you interact with uh, observables. So definitely check that out. And then finally, once you've covered all these things, I definitely encourage you to look at state management with Angular. Uh, once your application gets to a significant level of complexity, it becomes very hard to manage the data that you have on the client side. So you have tools like NGRX, which let you manage state on the client side. And this, that's a very elegant solution. Uh, that's way beyond the scope of this course, but that's again something that you should look at uh, if you're dealing with an application of a decent complexity. Uh, state management becomes a problem and uh, NGRX is one of the several solutions out there to handle that problem. So with this, I'm gonna wrap up this course. Uh, I hope this was helpful and you learned uh, something about Angular that you can apply in creating an application. Again, let me know in the comments if you need a detailed deep dive into any of these topics. Uh, and the other thing that I'm considering doing is showing you how to build an application end to end 
you watch me code an application end to end, this is gonna be very light on theory, but it's gonna be just watching me code, right? If that's something that interests you, uh, and I think that's gonna help if you wanna put all these theoretical concepts you learn into practice. Uh, again, let me know, uh, comment or write to me and let me know if that's something you're interested in. And I've definitely uh, tried to do a course uh, where I just build an application end to end using all these concepts. So thanks again for watching and uh, I hope this was helpful.